Pittsburgh's final public meeting. We are so excited to be here with you this evening. Um, in an effort to be as inclusive as possible, we have a Spanish interpreter, uh, Katiada uh, Manacata, with us. Uh, Katia will explain how to join the Spanish channel now. Go ahead, Katia. Eh, muy buenas tardes. Eh, hoy estamos aquí en el Civic Center Next 100. Eh, y el día de hoy yo seré el intérprete para la parte de español. Okay. So I will turn on interpretation now. I'm going to hit the globe and you can select if you want English or Spanish. Great, thank you, Laura. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce Gordon Robertson, director of Denver, Denver's planning, design and construction. Hi, good evening, good evening everybody. Welcome uh, to this meeting tonight. Thank you for being here. Uh, we wanna start with a formal land acknowledgement um, the Denver City Council and Denver American Indian Commission, we want to thank them for developing this land acknowledgement and for granting permission to Denver Parks and Recreation to use it. Denver Parks and Recreation honors and acknowledges that the land on which we reside is a traditional territory of the Ute, Cheyenne, and Arapaho peoples. We also recognize the 48 contemporary tribal nations that are historically tied to the lands that make up the state of Colorado. We honor elders past, present, and future, and those who have stewarded this land throughout generations. We also recognize that government, academic, and cultural institutions were founded upon and continue to enact exclusions and erasures of indigenous people. May this acknowledgement demonstrate a commitment to working to dismantle ongoing legacies of oppression and inequities, and recognize the current and future contributions of an indigenous communities in Denver. So I wanna thank you and welcome you tonight again for our third and final public workshop for the Civic Center Next 100 Concept Design Project. We are very happy to be here with you this evening and continue to imagine a future for the next 100 years of Civic Center Park. Over the last 100 years, Civic Center has been at the center of Denver's most important civic and cultural events. Civic Center has been front and center to witness important civic, environmental, and social issues throughout its history. And today is no exception. As we tackle difficult challenges in Civic Center's current history, we look forward to the future of the city's great public space. I'd like to take a moment to talk about the closure of the park. Civic Center Park was temporarily closed on September 15th for serious public and environmental health risks due to unsafe conditions associated with rodent infestation, human waste, trash accumulation, and illegal drug activity. The area will be uh, access restricted for purposes of cleaning, restoration and abatement. The closure is temporary and the park will reopen when abatement and cleanup measures have been completed and the park is safe for everyone to enjoy. We are taking these immediate steps in the current operations and maintenance of the park to help support our long-term planning and design goals that we are here to share with you today. And that's what today's about. So let's get on with it. Uh, we have some really exciting plans and we are very excited to uh, show you them today. The Civic Center Next 100 Project is an amazing opportunity for the people of Denver to help us look to the future to re-energize the park, including improvements to Bannock Street in front of the city and county building, the Greek Theater, the Central Promenade, and the Central Gathering feature. After receiving over 1,300 unique points of input on the concept options that were shared during the public workshop number two and via our survey, our team has created some pretty amazing preferred concept designs. And I, Okay, I'm biased, I said amazing, but really we're here today to hear what you think about them. Um, so please speak up, but we are excited to share, with, to, to share them this evening with you. And I'd now like to take a moment to thank our partners. Uh, Councilman Hines, who represents District 10 in which the park is located. I wanna thank him and his staff for being amazing partners in this process. I also wanna thank our project partners, the Civic Center Conservancy and the Elevate Denver Bond Program. We'd especially like to thank and recognize the voters who approved the Elevate Denver Bond in 2017. You are who make these projects possible. So thank you for voting. And now I'd like to hand it over to our great partner, Eric Lazari, Executive Director of the Civic Center Conservancy. Thank you so much, Gordon. And oh, 
Or Eric, just a, a, just a reminder for all speakers tonight to speak slowly so we can make sure that everything gets interpreted. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Laura. Um, thanks, Gordon. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, it has been the highlight of, of the year to really walk through, walk on the Civic Center Next 100 journey with you. Um, I'm so excited about what you all are gonna see tonight. Um, you know, the roots of this, you know, are con community informed based on the 2005 Civic Center Master Plan. This process is bringing that plan to life. That was a very in-depth public, public engagement process back in 2005. And I am thrilled as we go through this, we've had 2,500 points of feedback um, through the first two rounds of engagement. And we're really thrilled that the community continues to show their love for Civic Center Park. We know how important this space is to our community. Um, the love you all show through participating, through showing up, um, through coming into the park it is absolutely critical to the success of Civic Center. You know, what you are going to see tonight is going to allow us to make Civic Center Park easier to activate and easier to program. Events um, can come in easier, uh, but the park, which has always been known for its events like Civic Center Eats and Taste of Colorado and Pride Fest and Fiestas Patriots and Cinco de Mayo, all, all, of, all of these are what we have all known for Civic Center. But what's exciting as we're talking about the evolution of Civic Center is how do we make it a space better for everyday use? And you're gonna see how we are thinking about making it attractive when there aren't events, how there's amenities that will attract you if you're visiting the art museum or going to the Denver Public Library or just hanging out downtown. Um, great things to come and see and do. And I think we've done a really good job of really honoring the history of the park. Um, you know, we're rooted in the 2005 master plan. We're rooted in the 2009 design guidelines. We really wanna honor this as, Dan as Denver's first national historic landmark. Uh, so be on the lookout for that as well. And ultimately, we're trying to be responsive to the needs of the community. We're listening to what the community tells us they want in Civic Center Park and what they want in parks in the 21st century. And this is an honor for the project team. And hopefully you all see the honor and the responsibility you have as we all collectively shape Civic Center for several generations to come. So again, thank you for being part of this process. Thank you for showing the love to Civic Center. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jenna to walk us through our agenda for tonight. Great, thank you so much, Eric. Um, we have a very large and amazing team as part of the Civic Center Next 100 project. project. We'd like to recognize our parks team leadership, including um, Executive Director Happy Haynes, Deputy Director Scott Gilmore, Gordon Robertson, who you've already heard from this evening, myself, Jenna Harris, project manager on the park side, we also have Laura Morales from our community engagement team and Kelly um, Moore from our, the Dottie team. We also have an incredible design team led by Nicole Horst, Megan Chiatani from Wank Associates and Meredith Winskowski from Livable City Studio. And lastly, but not least, our incredible partner, Eric Lazari, executive director from the Civic Center Conservancy. Um, for today, we have a jam-packed agenda. Um, we will quickly walk you through the opportunities for feedback on this webinar, um, and then we will also walk you through the vision and principles that really have set the stage um, and, design, uh, and led the design as we've gone through the concept design. Um, tonight, we'll be looking specifically at the final design concepts for the four project areas, including Bannock Street, Central Gathering Feature, Greek Theater, and the Central Promenade. And then we'll have plenty of time at the end for a question and answer. And then we'll walk you through next steps on the, on the project. Uh, just as a reminder, please do put your questions in the Q&A box. Nicole will walk you through how to do that in just a moment. Um, but that will really be the opportunity for us to, to respond to your questions at the end. Um, please also note that we will be focusing on design questions first related to the Civic Center Next 100 project. But if there are other questions related to Civic Center more generally, We'll take those at the end. So thank you again for being here and I'll now pass it over to Nicole. Thanks, Jenna. Um, we want you guys to be active participants in this tonight. So um, as you know, you probably got this message when you signed in, but the meeting is being recorded. So if there's anything you wanna 
check back and hear it again, you'll be able to online. Um, your cameras are off, but you see us here. So how to, how to engage with us, there is a chat button at the bottom. So as you're listening and there's feedback or things you like or things you don't, go ahead and use that chat to engage with us. We'll be checking that throughout the presentation. That's also an opportunity to put things in when we have some open-ended questions. If you have questions for us that you want us to address at the end, and this is what Jenna was talking about, use that Q&A button. So different than the chat, a question that you want us to address, um, use that. There's an upvote. It's, I think, a thumbs up that you see that you can use to click on if you see someone already asked the question that you have give it a thumbs up and those ones that move to the top are ones that we'll make sure to to answer first in the Q&A. We have live polls tonight, so that's pretty exciting. There's things that we um, have some multiple choice questions for you as we're presenting, so pay attention as we go along and there'll be opportunities for you to chime in and then we'll we'll give the results live so you can see how other people are responding um, compared to how you think. Okay, I'll kick it off with our vision and principles. And for those of you who have been on some of these meetings in the past, and as Eric uh, talked and Gordon talked about at the beginning, we are really thinking about the next 100 years and a place for everyone every day. So our vision that we put together for this project is improvements to Civic Center will catalyze new activity and animate the heart of Denver. The transformation of four key areas will fulfill past planning visions and elevate Denver's first national historic landmark for the next 100 years with new daily energy, world-class performances and events. We've put together five principles that really support that vision and that um, are, have led us to the design concepts that you'll see tonight. So the first one is really thinking about a place for people. The Civic Center is a place that we want to be um, inclusive for everyone every day. We want it to be engaging, welcoming, comfortable for all ages, for ch from children to um, older, um, adults, to the visitors that come to Denver, to tourists, the workers that work around Civic Center, the community at large that comes and uses uh, Civic Center for, for public move, movements, all of that is really important and needs to continue into the next 100 years. We want to elevate Civic Center as a destination centered around cultural and community anchors. The park has so many um, great anchors already and how we can really celebrate those. Celebrating the historic significance. Um, Civic Center is a national landmark. It's one of the only parks in Denver that has that. And it, that goes back to the early 1900s. And that's pretty exciting to think about everything that's happened here, not just that designation, but the movements that have happened um, in Civic Center and the heroes of the park. We want to incorporate resilient design. This is really about thinking about the next 100 years and climate change and sustainability and long-term vitality. As, as we think about these design components, how can we make sure that we're creating a lasting legacy? And then the last one is connectivity and linking to the surrounding cultural um, spaces. Civic Center Park is so unique because it's in the heart of Denver and is surrounded by the art museum and the library and the city and county building and the state capitol and um, the Denver Center. So how can we really reinforce those physical and visual connections to the surrounding district and make this park really a, the, the heart of, of um, the city of Denver? And Meredith is going to talk about what we've heard so far and all the great feedback we've gotten. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. So um, as you guys know, this is the third public meeting um, for Civic Center, and um, just want to kind of highlight some of the um, the, the feedback, um, you know, how many responses we've gotten, how many people attended, and then what we've heard. So 
For the public workshop uh, we had in June, um, we had over 1,300 points of feedback. We had well over 1,000 surveys um, and many people attending a variety of focus groups um, and meetings at, the, at that, that same week. Um, we also did some hard copy surveys um, and reached out to folks at Civic Center Eats, Showers for All, um, and the St. Fran Francis Lunch Service to make sure, sure we were reaching all audiences and really getting a, um, diverse responses. As we thought, as we look at the numbers for both of the public um, workshops, if you want to go to the next slide, um, this just highlights public workshop one and two, and we have had over 2,500 points of feedback to date. Um, between those two public meetings, we've had 371 people attend and view it, um, almost 2,000 survey responses, um, and a lot of other outreach to support that. So. The, the concepts you, you'll see tonight are really rooted in the feedback we have been hearing that we heard at the previous public workshops. Um, and so we're looking forward to sharing them with you tonight. So the, the takeaways from the second workshop in June, um, we got feedback on the design concepts, but these takeaways are, were very consistent with what we heard at the beginning of the process. Um, we heard a lot about safety and cleanliness of the park, making it welcoming, accessible for everyone, really focusing on that um, inclusive nature of the park. Um, honoring the historic elements of the park and the surrounding architecture um, and basing it within the design guidelines, um, but making it a place for people, so incorporating trees, shade, spaces to gather and linger on a daily basis. Uh, the design concepts shared some ideas around water features, and we heard a lot about the um, need to and desire for us to be thoughtful with that use of water, um, you know, uh, due to climate resiliency and thinking about really um, be, being thoughtful with that use of water. A few other things that we heard um, were that the public really wants to integrate more gardens and native flowering pollinator plants. Civic Center has really great uh, planting beds today, um, and people would like to see more of those. A focus on sustainability, resiliency, long-term maintenance, um, make sure that everything we design um, really will last for many, many years to come. Connections to the surrounding neighborhoods and, and nearby destinations is also really important, um, both to downtown on the north side, um, as well as the, the cultural district and, and neighborhoods to the south and all around. Um, and in the last two, there's a desire to have a location for food and beverage um, to really make the park more of a year round space so that people would be drawn in all times of the year and, and want to stay and enjoy it. Um, and then also how programming can help, new programming and additional programming can help activate the park. So with that, we are going to do live polling again tonight, as Nicole mentioned, and we have um, a first question for you. Um, just about which, which of the following um, outreach efforts were you able to attend or participate in? So I believe in the live polling, you can select all that apply, so you should see it pop up on your screen. So um, if you attended public workshop one, or if you just took the survey, um, public workshop two, if you attended that, or if you um, took a survey, if you did it all, we'd love to hear. Um, we had a lot of people participate um, in a stakeholder or focus group, um, or if this is your first time participating, um, thank you for being here. Great, and we have about 60% that have participated, so I'll wait just a few more seconds, get your vote in, this is an easy one. All right, it is slowed down, so I'm just going to assume that's all. I'm going to end the poll and share the results. Great, thanks, Laura. So a lot of attendance at, at Public Workshop 1, 2, and the surveys, and then a handful of people participating for the first time tonight. So glad you are here. Thanks, everyone. So as you guys know, um, what we're talking about tonight is these four integrated projects, um, Bannock Street, the Greek Theater, the Central Gathering Feature, and the Central Promenade. And so what you'll see tonight um, is how all of these spaces 
um, are, are create very distinct rooms um, within the park that provide different experiences. So if you want to go to the next slide, you can see here from the, the renderings, how they're all kind of uniquely different um, and, and very distinct in the way they, they function and the way they're designed, um, but collectively they create Civic Center. So to start, we're going to go through Bannock Street. Um, and Bannock Street is intended to be a, an event space and extension of the park balanced with human scale elements for daily use. So just a reminder of what we shared with you all in June. Um, these are the two concept alternatives and they have a lot of similarities, but a few differences I'll highlight. So they both have um, kind of a central um, promenade for bikes and pedestrians and a bike lane um, that kind of doubles as a service drive along Bannock. Um, and they both have garden rooms on, on the eastern edge. Um, the difference is, is the scale and size of those primarily that the, the top one, concept one, has much wider garden rooms than, um, than concept two on the bottom. Another key difference is there is a fountain or water feature shown in concept two on the bottom. And the design of that central space kind of integrates the city and county building plaza in with it. So we asked everybody what they liked about these or which one they preferred um, in June. And the next slide shows uh, kind of the takeaways. We heard it's pretty split. A lot of people liked concept one, a lot of people liked concept two, um, and obviously uh, uh, some noted a little bit of both. So we really looked into the themes and the comments of what people shared that helped to help guide us um, in, in our preferred concept design. And what we heard is that, again, a strong desire for shade, seating, and the larger garden areas to provide spaces for people every day. Uh, people were really interested in the interactive water feature, but there were a lot of questions ar around the water, water conservation and the way the, the water feature would operate. A strong interest in stormwater collection planters, native plantings, and, and the pollinator gardens as well um, throughout the garden rooms. And then there, we heard a lot about um, the need to maintain um, space for events um, and, and access to the park um, and that, that event infrastructure within Bannock so it can still host all the great events and festivals that it hosts today. Um, and then the, another key thing is just maintaining access to the backside of McNichols um, because that's how many um, vehicles enter the park for, for maintenance and great things like Civic Center Eats. So this is where we have landed with our preferred concept design. Um, and the idea is that the, the redesign of Bannock Street creates a grand entry to the city and county building with a flexible central plaza, interactive water feature, and garden rooms along the, that eastern edge. This design really balances the event needs with the daily civic needs and services, which I'll talk more about. The, the space is really organized around three spaces for people um, and, and really making Bannock welcoming and inclusive for everybody. And so I'm gonna walk through all three of these spaces and, and kind of orient you guys, but we have the garden rooms, bike and pedestrian promenade, um, and then the, the plazas, the plaza in the center, which is made up of the city and county building plaza and Bannock central plaza as well. So the historic forms and views of Civic Center are honored in this redesign. New trees within Bannock and the city and county building plaza are aligned with the trees in the Great Lawn and the paths extend into Bannock. So the paths um, on either side of the Great Lawn and within Civic Center where the dashed line is extend into the plaza. And this water feature reinforces and celebrates the view. The large plaza sets the stage for everyday public life and supports a diversity of activities and events. Um, the interactive water feature has adaptable lighting to celebrate events and, and festivities in, in Denver. So you can see the, the top image on the right, um, the gateway or kind of arched water feature being that interactive feature. Um, and, and just below that adjacent to the Great Lawn is a scrim water feature that spreads a thin sheet of water across the plaza paving, making it a reflective and interactive piece. So the bottom image on the right um, shows that, that idea. The same paving material extends through both plaza spaces, making them feel as one and very cohesive. 
Walls and edges create opportunities for a variety of seating types, and a horticultural display garden is featured in front of the city and county building with natives and pollinator plantings. Here you can see how the water feature frames the views to the city and county building, and the scrim water feature spreads that thin sheet of water next to the great lawn, making it interactive. You can see movable seating on the edges, really uh, creating a place for people to linger and gather um, within Bannock Central Plaza. This space is alive 18 hours a day with lighting throughout the entirety of Bannock, complementing the city and county building lighting. Bannock Central Plaza is also sized to be flexible and accommodate the largest of events. So here is shown the water feature can turn, the water features both can be turned off and a stage can be placed in this central plaza area for events like these. Moving on to the garden rooms, um, these are along the eastern edge of Bannock and they're really intended to be an extension of the park, expressing native sus sustainable landscape and providing spaces to relax and enjoy the park. You can see um, there are a couple kiosk locations in here. Um, one is near the interactive water feature on kind of the south side, uh, the south garden room, really intended to be food and beverage um, or game rentals that helps activate that central plaza space. And then one on the north side, north garden room near Colfax, that one is intended to be um, more kind of security or access control into Bannock um, because Bannock is not open to cars um, on a daily basis basis anymore. It will only be open for um, vehicles that need to, to access um, for events, park, or the or McNichols. The garden rooms are layered spaces with a variety of places for seating and gathering and also native plants and stormwater collection planters. So the third space is the bike and pedestrian promenade. This is really is intended to be an active and flexible space for every day and for events. It creates a people oriented space through its curbless street design, high quality pavement and no through access for cars. Also the, on the Western edge um, and nearest to the city and county building, there's a pedestrian only path to ensure we maintain ADA access to the city and county building. The promenade, if you go to the next one, uh, creates an everyday space designed for daily needs and civic services. So it's not just a space for events or just for bikes and uh, pedestrians, but these daily needs civic services such as a shower truck, blood drive, voter res registration, or many other daily needs and services can come in um, and, and support people within this space as well. But the promenade is also designed for festivals um, and tent setup along it. Um, so you can see here a row of tents and, and right in the foreground, you have your uh, pedestrian promenade during those festival times, but the garden rooms also remain open um, for enjoyment during those times as well. On the back side of the tents, um, we can maintain that, that pathway for pedestrians um, during festivals and events. So we've looked at how to lay this out because it's really about the balance of how do we meet the daily needs of people, but also these events. Um, and this is just a conceptual layout showing how the tents could be placed along Bannock for festivals. You can see that central space has a greater number of tents while the path, uh, while the path closest to the city and county building can remain open um, when you have tents um, along Bannock. And then when you turn off the water feature um, for, for larger events, um, the central plaza space is large and very flexible to accommodate a number of these events. The 60 by 80 space is kind of a, um, what we've been working with for a, a stage area and some surroundings, but you can see we have 20 to 30 feet on all edges for um, you know, movement and, and additional state staging as needed. So a lot of flexibility for the, even the largest events. We also know that Bannock's a key connector between downtown and the surrounding neighborhoods. So the con connectivity to the bike, bike network and other pedestrian paths within, within Civic Center um, has been thought through and shown here on the screen. 
but the design of Bannock makes it uniquely different and that it will really put people first in the future. The spaces created make it accessible and welcoming for all. And this idea that you see the, the new gateway elements could be public art, really helping to draw people into the space um, and create a new gateway for Civic Center for people to enjoy every day. So based on all of that, we would love to hear what most excites you about the final Bannock Street vision. Um, you can see the, the polling just popped up on your screen. Um, so garden rooms, um, the interactive <clears throat> water feature, bike and pest pedestrian promenade at the open central plaza, <clears throat> the city and county building plaza, the gateway ideas, um, all of the above, or if you have another idea, please feel free to put it in chat. Um, so we will be monitoring that. You can stick some additional thoughts in chat. All right, and we're about 60%. So we've got 27 people that have taken the poll. I'll give it a few more seconds. This is harder. Okay, it has slowed down. I will end the poll and share the results. Great, thanks, Laura. So um, between garden rooms and all of the above. So that is great to hear. All, they all got some votes, but um, good to hear a lot of people liking all of the above, but um, also the garden rooms really making it a place for, for people to enjoy daily. So thanks for the feedback. Nicole? Yep. Sorry, I'm just getting unmuted and camera on. So now we're going to go into um, the center of the park and talk about the central gathering feature, the Greek theater, and the central promenade. And we're, we've, we've always um, broken these out and talk in, talked about them individually because they are each their own outdoor room. They have their own identity and programming that happens with them, but they are very um, closely linked because of how close they are together. So we're really starting to think about these um, in concert together. So as, as we present each of them, they'll build on each other and you'll kind of understand why some of the decisions have been made the way they are. Um, the I'll orient you all because I know we had some questions in some of the earlier presentations about where the central gathering feature is so it is in the heart of the park and this is this is where the halo is along the center you see the promenade here running along the cultural axis and the Greek theater there um, next to the city and county building and the library. Um, the Greek theater really is thinking about a premier outdoor venue. The promenade is, um, is continuing the special market event corridor that it's always been, but also making it a comfortable space. And the central gathering feature is really thinking about a unique destination in the heart of the park that can draw people in that has water and gardens and public art. And we're also thinking about how these spaces work um, for an 18 hour destination. What happens at night and how can we um, create, use light to create safety and comfort in the park. And so here's a little glimpse of that as, as we start to talk through these. The first one that I'll talk about is the central gathering feature and the, the public meeting in June, we had three concepts for this area. So this is that unique destination in the heart of the park that sits right off of the promenade. And the three concepts really were split across the board, similar to Bannock, that there wasn't one that really rose to the top from the feedback that we heard. But when we dove deeper into that feedback, um, there were a lot of similarities in the comments that we were hearing. People really liked the unique features, what, thinking about water, sculpture, gardens, the light, and how that could continue moving forward. There was a lot of excitement about completing the park vision. So the central gathering feature was something that was in the 
1918, 1917 original Bennett plan um, that was part of the City Beautiful movement. And it's one of the only elements in the park that has never been um, fully built out. So it, it really, you know, going back to City Beautiful movement and the layout of Civic Center Park is really about celebrating those view sheds and the cultural and civic accesses that come through the park and how we can use that to really draw people into the into this space and create a gathering um, a gathering feature in the center. Concept three didn't have shade trees, and that was something that we heard a lot about in the feedback with that one, that people liked um, incorporating shade trees to create that, that comfort of the natural environment with some type of shade element in here. And there's a great opportunity to do that with um, what Meredith talked about, the trees in the the Great Lawn connecting to Bannock Street and continuing those along the axis through the central gathering feature that could really be a nice um, move in the park that starts to bring the tree canopy in and, and meets one of our goals for sustainability too. So what we've done with this one is really took all that feedback and have come up with five elements or parameters that need to move forward into the next stage of design on this. And the first one is an iconic sculptural element. Art needs to play a major role in the design of um, and be integrated into the design of the central gathering feature. Um, we really want it to represent historically marginalized voices. I think that's something that we've heard throughout this process and art is a great way to tell those stories and in, a, in an exciting way. We're suggesting a circular form for it um, to tie to the history of the park and really making sure that it creates a gathering area, that it's a new outdoor room in the heart of the park and engages in, in that place for everyone every day. For water, what we're suggesting here is a unique intermittent, intermittent artistic fog feature. So fog or mist. And so this is something that's really different and doesn't, Denver doesn't have something like this. Um, Bannock Street is getting the interactive feature. And we think that the central gathering feature should be something unique and different. So using fog to create year round in interest, it's a type of water feature that can be on in the summertime and the winter time and using displays at certain times of year to minimize excessive water use and really maximizing that artistic effect that draws people in. Um, a Colorado garden. So we heard a lot about the floral displays that are currently in the central gathering feature area and how much those are beloved by people that visit Denver and wanting to maintain that, but also thinking about the next 100 years and sustainability. So how can we make um, this, we wanna make this a native Colorado garden that is thinking about drought tolerant plantings and design that still has that seasonal floral display and brings those trees in that, that connect to the civic axis and maintains that, it maintains and strengthens that strong view between the city um, buildings. Dynamic interactive lighting. So I think this is something that could be really cool um, in terms of how the art and light lighting um, interact and people interact with the lighting as well. So integrating that into the space to make it safe and comfortable. Um, there's a lot of things happening around the country with, or in world with light festivals that happen in the evening that can expand the program program of the park into the winter season when it gets dark earlier at night. And I think this is a, a prime location for that to happen in the in the heart of Civic Center that really ties to all the lights um, that happen around the, around the park and um, around the, the holiday seasons. And then completing the historic park vision. Um, you see the halo, that circular form referencing the historic architecture that's laid out in the park, celebrating that intersection of the two axes, axes that, that uh, this is the nexus of where they come together, extending the plaza into the promenade. So these, 
two spaces start to really um, be permeable and, and um, engage with one another, providing those trees near near the central promenade, using that this as an opportunity to get some more tree canopy in the park. And that, you know, we've, we've talked about this, but I think the central gathering feature needs to be flexible for park wide events, but also could be curated for small um, cultural events, small curated events that could tie programming to the art museum, to the Denver library, to the other art um, museums that are in the area that really make this something special that when you go to visit any of those places there's something that happens in the park that really starts to to link together and tie to those universal accessibility is the last one and we've really accomplished this with the greek theater and it's exciting to think how we can continue to think about accessibility for all abilities, all ages in the central gathering feature as well to, you know, speaking to marginalized voices and really making that part of the story. So as I've kind of hinted on, art is such a key to this. Um, you see a little glimpse here of what we're talking about. You can see the fog, you can see the circular form, the shade trees of that grove coming in and the floral displays around the outside. But what we want to make sure is integrated is the art. And Jenna is going to talk about something exciting that the city and um, Denver Parks is thinking about um, in terms of how to really integrate this into one space and make it really something unique and cool for Denver. Great. Thanks so much, Nicole. So as uh, Nicole mentioned, what our design team has done as part of the Civic Center Next 100 project is really set the parameters for a future call to artist. Um, we are, are hoping to open this up um, nationally and uh, potentially internationally to get an artist and design team to really help think about this space in a way that um, really matches the significance of what this could be for the city of Denver and for Civic Center Park. The central gathering feature is a really exciting part of Civic Center Park that was never fully implemented as intended as part of um, the original 1917 Bennett plan. Um, and Denver Parks and Rec and the city as a whole really recognizes um, that this could be a significant destination for the city of Denver. So we really wanna work with you all, um, the public as part of another ongoing process and call for artists to fully design this space. Um, so that's the reason for a slightly less developed uh, concept option in this area. Um, but we're looking forward to working with you all in the future to, to fully define what that may be. And I'll now hand it over to Megan. To, oh, I forgot we had a question. So I'll let Nicole read this polling question. I know this is the fun part where you guys, everyone on the call gets to engage with us. So what most excites you about the central gathering landscape vision? So we talked about that iconic sculptural element yet to be determined the unique intermittent artistic fog feature, the Colorado garden, so really being native planting and thinking about that, dynamic interactive lighting, completing the park vision. So the, the there's a lot kind of to unpack in that one, but bringing that circular form and really finishing the design of the park, which is exciting when you think about the next 100 years that it'll move forward with, with that completed all of the above and a place for other to, to give us more ideas and chat and continue the conversation. If... All right, we're about almost at the place where we've been stopping around 30 people that respond. Oh, we've got a few more. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and share results. So great, I think we've got a, a good spread here of everything got picked once or twice or three times and there's an other in there, all of the above too. So iconic sculptural element in Colorado Garden are at the top, which is great to hear. And now we'll let Megan. Uh, Thanks, jump in on the Greek, Greek. The Greek yeah. theater. <laughs> um, we've been teasing you with this one a little bit with some images up until now, but um, 
As a reminder, our task for enhancing the Greek theater is really to provide a premier outdoor performance venue. So this will really be the only outdoor downtown venue of its kind. Um, however, unlike a number of other urban venues, the Greek theater is also a public park space. It's not intended to be secured when a ticket event is not in place. It must continue to be a place to gather, to celebrate and demonstrate uh, 365 days a year. So uh, on a basic level, that dual use task really requires weather protection, AV system support, universal accessibility for both performers and community members and the, the sort of creature comforts um, such as lighting, shade, and a comfortable place to, to relax that makes it inviting. So um, those of you who participated in our last workshop will recognize what's on the screen here. Um, the, the each focus, each concept focused on a stage and an overhead trust strategy uh, for, to support that audiovisual system. Um, the first was more of a light touch approach, um, really uh, intended to be um, equipped to be removed when an event was not in place, um, could potentially take a one or two days to set up and take down, but could not be left unattended, but would really keep the current view of Civic Center, of uh, the Greek theater consistent with what's there today. Um, the first stage really extended the current stage form outward to be a little bit more of a usable size. What you see on the bottom left here is really scaled for a, a typical rock and roll band. Um, the second concept was designed as a more plug and play approach. So this larger trust system that you see here is um, actually a, a, a year round event, uh, element um, that protects audiovisual systems so they can be made available for um, performers and programmers on a more regular basis. Um, the stage you see is also sized for dance and stage performances could even be sized for a couple of drum kits for a small battle of the bands or a uh, small orchestra or, or classes, class trip uh, taking a, a class picture. So um, unlike the, the uh, promenade or the uh, gathering feature and Bannock concepts, we did not really have a lot of question as to what the favorite was here. What you see on the right is the survey results. There was a strong pet preference for concept to both the stage and the overhead shade element. Um, uh, and, and we also got that same strong preference through our focus groups as well. So um, as a reminder, our goals really are to build the adaptability for everyday and events. That's not just shade, it's also the AV system, it's weather protection um, year round, it's um, in circulation and access for, for load in, load out and, and the public use. We need to do, we do need to provide shade. We know that the Greek is unbearably hot in the summer uh, for anyone who's been to Civic Center Eats. It's right where you wanna be, um, but, but is, is quite uncomfortable when the sun really beats down. Um, we need to provide universal accessibility to and through the theater. You'll see um, how, we've, how we've approached that. And what was not uh, detailed in our last um, concept, but it has been fleshed out now is a, a new welcoming South Plaza which creates a connection across uh, to 14th Avenue. So here you can start to see what that might look like. In this bird's eye image, we can really see um, how we've addressed a lot of the national historic landmark um, uh, challenges or, or um, uh, constraints that, that exist around this structure. We need to avoid anchoring to um, any new elements to that historic architecture. We need to preserve the iconic North and South views that um, really, provide that sense of arrival within the park. Um, to do that, we've designed this overhead canopy that actually um, drapes the entire structure and anchors well outside of the historic um, footings. Um, the AV system sits beneath a, this four all season uh, canopy here on this ring truss here. Um, again, that arch form provides an acu improved acoustic experience as well. And on the ground, you see that new expanded stage in the round as we've dubbed it. Uh, here you can see what that stage really starts to, how that changes the space. Um, we call this the stage, but it's really meant to be so much more. The loud, large rounded form draws the stage action outward into the bowl um, where it's currently tucked into the structure. Um, in doing so, we're actually now able to use the colonnade, the, the um, existing um, space within the structure as a viewing area. That's not currently possible because of the, uh, the view lines with the current stage, but um, really will become 
a new, a very cool place to be uh, during an event uh, or, or the day-to-day -day use. That stage is also terraced. So it's a space to sit, uh, to hang out, to um, take a family photo. Um, and what you see draped around the edge is an incorporated ADA ramp. So um, that provides permanent ADA access to the stage level, benefiting both performers and park users alike. So if you imagine the space on a, a hot August day, you can understand the benefit of this larger canopy. Um, it enhances day-to-day -day activities, such as something like this, Civic Center Eats, um, while keeping that historic architecture totally visible. Um, on the ground, the historic paving grid is preserved, but has been the material has been replaced with a consistent paving material it, it, uh, rather than the combined concrete and brick that's there today. Uh, that paving was not initially engineered to handle the big heavy truck and bus loads that, that Civic Center uses um, really call for now. And so um, looking at a fundamentally new material on the ground that can be more easily maintained um, and, and make this much easier to, to move across the space and, and make use of it. As you think about the space at night, that new AV system is not only a tool for enlivening um, audio events, but also architectural lighting to um, bring the historic structure to life in the evening. Here you see um, something that's more of a white light. This certainly is an exciting opportunity when we think about year round um, nighttime animation and the parade of lights or, or other great iconic Denver nighttime experiences. So during our last workshop, we walked you through some of the tremendous access challenges that are associated with this structure. The, the colonnade, the um, back of house and the stage currently all sit at different elevations. All are accessed through stairs. Um, and so this public park space is far from accessible to, to the community that it's serving. So um, when we came up with our concept, we designed a series of new ramp approaches to improve access to all of the areas for, to, of the theater for those pushing a, a wheelchair or a stroller or a, a loading dolly, um, which use the existing ba balustrade openings on the north here and here, and um, um, now provide a, a much more streamlined access to the upper terrace and the lower bowl. Um, we were also excited to share the new ADA access to the stage level that was provided by that new stage in the round, um, as well as small ramps to the colonnade to make that accessible. To the credit of one of our focus groups during the second round of outreach, however, we were really pushed to, to try harder and, and um, push this further, where we had really let the historic architecture within the back of house limit our through access um, of the theater. Um, as we talked about the importance of accessibility and the history of the Gang of 19, which I'll speak to in a moment, um, we had previously been seen ourselves as limited to um, be uh, incapable of providing that, that complete back of house access. After that conversation, we, we did go back to the drawing board and look more closely at the historic structure. And we actually came up with a strategy um, that combines selective removal of some of the historic stones using the existing joints within them and replacement with a large um, kind of grand ramp that runs through the entire structure so that we now actually have complete through ADA access from 14th Avenue all the way to the Voorhees Memorial as the new primary corridor um, for accessing the park along this route. Um, so how does that work? Um, in addition to the, the in-structure improvements, I mentioned that ramped access to the Greek theater, some regrading of the South Plaza, which was already planned for redesign as part of the 2005 master plan makes that possible. Um, one of, as I mentioned, one of the, the key uh, stories that um, have resonated as we went through this design process, it's, it's the, the story of the Gang of 19. Um, for those not familiar, these individuals really are among the heroes of Civic Center's history. Um, and in 1978, here at Civic Center, uh, protested against the lack of access to public transportation um, and helped really spur the ADA movement. Um, so, uh, this plaza, in addition to physically providing that access, is also an opportunity to celebrate their story and include a linear paving monuments that uh, honor 
those 19 individuals and celebrate the story of accessibility, but also just the power of political demonstration at this First Amendment venue. Functionally, this is designed to be a really flexible plaza. It certainly has to be um, with all that, that happens around the Greek theater. Um, due to the small spaces within the historic structure, options for performer green rooms, uh, performer restrooms, um, and other performer facilities are, are pretty limited within the structure and historically limited the ability to program this on a regular basis. Um, and what we've grown to understand is that many retrofitted venues such as this one are now turning to trailers to provide those um, facilities uh, without impacting uh, historic structures like this and, and with the ability to continue to adapt to, to always changing performer needs. So this plaza really is designed to uh, facilitate uh, all of those temporary performer um, needs. The integrated sanitary and electrical connections are located to, um, adjacent to uh, trailer pull-up areas, um, really allowing those to, to camp here um, for a night, if it's for an event, for a week, for a festival, for um, you know what, whatever period of time is deemed necessary, um, and then disappear and, and kind of keep the um, architectural integrity of the space intact. There's a double benefit here, however, because what, what we're also thinking about are the critical uh, city services that are provided in Civic Center and need to continue to be made available. So those same electrical and sanitary con connections, those same uh, trailer pull-up locations um, will also be able to benefit programs like Showers for All and um, those, uh, you know, got really important services that that happen here. So uh, here we start to see what this looks like. Um, the the um, new gateway is really just um, enhancement of the historic architecture. These new ornamental trees are intended to frame the view into the Greek theater extending to the Voorhees Memorial. What's not seen here is we, we also hope to incorporate annual plantings that, that we know Civic Center does better than anyone um, and get some of the seasonal color incorporated into this space. And you can see on the ground, those linear paving monuments can really uh, elucidate this incredible history within Civic Center. Drawing back, you can get a good view of the new double row of trees that have been added here. Just like um, the other spaces within the park, we know comfort is key and um, a place to rest, a place to, to meet a friend um, a, a after a long day of work. Um, this, this really is meant to become an, a new space for people, um, something it's not currently really um, doing very well. So um, this corridor is really meant to fit within the larger cultural context of the Akama Corridor, um, extending um, all the way from the Voorhees Memorial across 14th Avenue and ultimately the Art Museum and Denver Public Library. So this, and this is not a new idea. This is really just kind of reinvigorating the historic cultural axis upon which the whole project's built. So with that, we have another polling question. Um, what most excites you about the new Greek theater vision? Is it the canopy structure to make the space more comfortable for performances in everyday use? Is it the improved accessibility to ensure this is a space for all? Is it the expanded stage in the round stage deck? Is it the new South Gateway Plaza with the homage to the Gang of 19? Is it the new dynamic theater lighting or all of the above? Um, and of course, we, we wanna hear anything we've missed in chat. All right, this one is coming in slower. So if go ahead and make your entry. About 40% have participated. All right, give it a few more seconds. I'm gonna end and show the results. All right. So always love when all of the above is selected. That's that's fantastic. Um, but it sounds like the, the canopy structure and approved accessibility are also leading the, the hunt. I think that lines up well with some of the feedback we've gotten from focus groups this week as well. So um, I can't see the chat. I'll let all of you look at that because I am sharing the screen, but looking forward to reading the chat shortly. There's a lot going on in the chat, Megan. So <laughs> I think we'll come back to some of that in Q&A too. 
Thanks. Keep it going. It's great to hear feedback on these things. Um, so now I'm going to talk about the central promenade and some of the what we're what we're proposing here. When we um, had the two concepts in June, we really focused around shade. Um, the idea for the central promenade is to maintain it as this event corridor, but also make it comfortable for everyday use. Um, the and, and they were tied. So <laughs> similar to what we were dealing with um, with the central gathering feature as well. Um, concept one was were, were these poles that held banners that went across that could ha also have lights that went across the promenade and created this filtered shade. And concept two were these um, summer artistic shade structures. So you knew it was summer when civic when the Civic Center umbrellas came out. They were 15 to 18 feet tall, and they were really they had lighting integrated with them. And when we read back, when we dove into the feedback, there was really this desire for year-round vibrancy, durability, and shade. Um, so thinking about how we could provide that in a way that, that balanced the feedback that we got. Um, people loved that, you know, it was adaptable, maintaining accessibility for people, food trucks, events. There was a lot of support for unique lighting features here um, and how that could be done and providing seating opportunities in the shade. And so as you saw at the Greek, um, we have a large shade structure there and how can we still bring some of that into the promenade but not overwhelm the entire park with too much shade. So if you go to the next slide, Megan, um, here you kind of, you see an image of the Greek in the background and the promenade in the front. And, you know, with the food trucks set up, this might be um, like a Civic Center Eats events where, the um, the what we're sh what we're proposing is these um, movable poles that are about sixty feet on center, and they have electrical connections at the base of them. So that allows um, the food trucks to be able to run without generators or for market style events or anything that's out there that needs some type of electrical connections. There would be plenty of those along the promenade. It also creates this framework to be able to hang banners across or diagonal or light um, features across at nighttime, um, cantonary type lighting. We're, we're thinking, like Megan talked about at the Greek, making sure that we have truck rated paving um, in the promenade, but something that we want to consider as we're thinking about sustainability in the next 100 years is looking at a permeable paving system here that it would allow stormwater to infiltrate. Um, and so that's something we're recommending is, as it goes into the next stage of design, really pursuing that as an option. The, the shade features are, are these movable umbrellas and chairs. So these aren't the big ones that we had in concept two, but something that's much more human scaled that could come out for an event and be easily moved off when there isn't an event happening and they can be special to, to Civic Center. And at night, um, what these poles allow, so we still have the historic light poles on the outside, but the poles at the 60 feet center allow cantonary lights to, to hang across that could be used um, in four seasons and that complement the historic character. So we're not looking at the beer garden type light, but something a little bit more special that you see in, in this image. And on a, on a, um, a, you know, it's a seasonal festival and event corridor, the banners could hang across for Cinco de Mayo for different cultural events that happen that really start to bring some color and excitement into the park. Even though these are shown as all white, those would change as the as seasons happen. Those umbrellas that can move in and out. And at winter time, you know, when we're thinking about something like Chris Kindle Market that happened in Civic Center last year, um, those cantonary lights can can be set up. The electrical hookups still work for those market 
style um, tents and you see the historic paving pattern there and how that that would be truck rated to be able to move in and out different equipment. So what most excites you about the final central promenade vision? We have new enhanced light canopy, so the cantonary lights that run across, the adaptability for banners or other lightweight seasonal decor, integrating permeable paving for stormwater infiltration, iconic movable furnishings, which incorporate small shade covers, such as umbrellas. So those are those umbrellas and chairs, all of the above, and then other in chat. All right, got about 18 responses in, 17. Give it a few more seconds. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll in a second. All right. And here are the results. Great. So the light canopy, the store, the, the permeable paving were at the top. All of the above is right there too. So that's great to hear. There's a couple others in the chat, the iconic movable furnishing. So that's awesome. A little bit of everything except the banners, but. <laughs> So as we think about um, these, these four different rooms in the park in the next 100 years, I think we're not just thinking about today, we're really thinking about the future of Civic Center and what this place could be and how these ideas can really start to activate and catalyze the space. And I think just circling back to our vision, that was really the goal that, that we were set out with is, is making it more vibrant and bringing energy here. And I think, it, you know, our last question is really thinking about all four of these spaces and which one uh, I believe that is going to be the next slide, right? Of, and, it, and it's a chance for you to respond and chat of all the things that we shared tonight of the final preferred concepts, which, what are you most excited about? And I think that could be one of the spaces that could be something individually in the space, like what just rises to the top of your mind um, and that resonates with you tonight. And you can put those in chat. And that one takes a little bit more time and it's not something we really get to quickly respond back to, but I think I can, I can read along to see what, uh, what people are writing as we get them in here. An iconic art feature drawn from a worldwide competition. That is pretty exciting, isn't it? I, I agree with you, Jeffrey. Um, we talked a lot about permanent eating venue in the park. I think this needs to be a significant, thoughtful addition to the ideas being generated. There are some thoughts to that in Bannock, and we can maybe circle around to that a little bit too. I don't know, Meredith, if you're on, if you want to. Um, attention to accessibility that it's it's finally being seen as a necessity in the versus a feature um most important element for the future of the park will be the central gathering spaces space and making it powerful and iconic like the crown fountain and the bean in chicago yeah, Nicole just chiming in and, and helping read some of these. I know it's hard to read them <laughs> quick when they move on the screen. So the um, permeable pavers, great to hear that there is a tension, you know, that, that pe folks are picking up on that and the you know water, water conservation, air quality. Um, shade, yeah, very consistent kind of thinking. So and, and from what we've heard in the other meetings. Flexibility for different events and good accessibility. I think that's 
flexibility Great, well, spaces. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, maybe keep the chat um, responses coming, but we could also, should we move it over to, to Q&A? Because we have some questions. Great. Thanks, Meredith. We had a lot of questions come in and feel free to keep them coming um, in the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, go through the ones that we've received so far. Um, the first question I'm going to ask is, I'm going to direct it to Laura. Um, and this question is from Aaron. Aaron asks um, about uh, this type of public meeting tends to skew older, wealthier, and whiter. How have you engaged underrepresented communities during this uh, during this project through public engagement? All right. Um, so we agree. All public meetings at the city definitely skew. So we recognize that at the beginning. Um, I mean, there's a number of things we do. I think the primary step is our partnerships and our contacts. So we make sure that we've got a good list. We had about 500 stakeholders, community organizations, individuals that we email out with every update. Um, and we need their support in a lot of this to make sure their community is informed. So we use a lot of those community connections to help spread the word for us. So people that would not pay attention to a city of Denver posting might pay attention to their community organization posting. Um, but one other thing is our surveys. We know a lot of people may not show up for the public meeting, but the survey is a little accessible, more accessible uh, to take on your free time. So not perfect, but we do use demographics as a way to see if we're missing anybody. So we like to look at that throughout different spots of time of our survey and see if we're missing zip codes, um, parts of the city that we might not be hearing from as much, which always happens. So then we do pushes to our rec centers online through Facebook, um, et cetera, into those neighborhoods. Um, and we also uh, make sure that everything is bilingual. Um, we want to make sure that all of our, if for a survey for a city or for a park project that affects the whole city, we want to make sure at least we have Spanish and English um, accessible for that. Um, and I think that's it. I mean, it's, it really involves a lot of steps and a lot of checking in on ourselves and making sure that we are continually pushing. And I don't know if Scott was wanting to say something. I saw your camera come on. Okay. I was just gonna to speak to some of the other questions. Okay, great. Homelessness but yeah, so we, we, tr we try and it's always imperfect, but we always need your help on that. Great, thanks, Laura. Yep. Um, Scott, since you turned your camera on at the perfect timing, um, I'm gonna ask you the next question about what is um, Parks' strategy for dealing with the current um, overrun of the unhoused in Civic Center. Yeah, I did see quite a few questions about homelessness and the showers and the restrooms. So I'm gonna try to speak to all of those um, um, just in, in a grouping. Um, our parks in Denver are for everyone um, from, the, from the poorest person to the richest person. Um, we manage our, we try to manage our public spaces to be safe and welcoming to all. It is challenging in a time of our city where we have a lot of social issues going on. Um, it is, it is very challenging. And um, we do, Civic Center is at the heart of our city and we do have homeless in the city that spend time in the park. Um, we, as we move forward, the park is closed as everybody has said, we, um, are working on cleaning up the park. We're just trying to restore areas. And at this point, we have been approved um, with quite a significant increase in staffing that will be working in the park um, 20 hours out of the day, seven days a week, and a, a very healthy increase of rangers that are going to be dedicated to the park to make sure that they are engaging with the population in the park and individuals in the park explaining what the park rules and regulations are but also trying to address any illegal activity that's happening, but also trying to connect people that have, um, that might be homeless that are looking to um, be directed to services. The restrooms in the park, there are the McNichols restrooms in the park, and I saw a comment about those. They are, they do close at six at this time. Because of the increase in staffing um, that has been approved, we will try to keep those restrooms open longer. We cannot keep restrooms open if they are not staffed, because what happens is the restrooms are, are it, bad things are happening in the restrooms if we are not there to manage and make sure that things are um, being taken care of and cleaned up in a, in, a, in a manner that 
make sure people are safe in those restrooms when they go into them. So that is what we're gonna work on to try to increase restroom hours. We're gonna have more staffing in the park. We're gonna do some additional things to try to increase safety. So we will be working on all those issues. On the showers that are in the park, um, I do wanna to speak to that. That is a group that I met at a safe outdoor space and they were providing showers um, for individuals in the safe outdoor spaces. That trailer not only provides showers, but does laundry. I worked with them to get them in the park because we do have homeless in the park. And it is not condescending to have somebody go take a shower, get their clothes washed, and actually come out and be able to try to go maybe get a job and get back on track. I've had people, I've been out there a lot in the park, and I've had people that have used that shower and gotten their clothes washed, personally come up to me almost in tears, thanking me for us trying to make sure that we're providing support services for them in the park. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I was speaking to that. Um, we are having some challenging situations. I'm working with Eric Lazaria and others to really try to address the, the situation. And when we reopen the park, we hope that we keep it safe and, and, you know, clean for everyone to enjoy safely. Thanks, Scott. Um, we're also getting a lot of questions um, about the Allen True murals in the Greek theater. Megan, would you be able to answer that question? About yeah. What we'll be doing with the renovations? Yeah, I didn't get to the chance to get into it because we had such a short amount of time, but um, the number one priority for the Allen True murals is protecting them. They've um, they've had a long history of getting um, damaged and um, they're very difficult to preserve and maintain and are certainly um, an artistic uh, gem within, within the city and the park. So there, um, our project architect that we're working with has actually come up with um, a plan to uh, enclose the areas within that um, the, uh, the uh, um, alcove area, uh, converting it into a small room um, that's that's now um, better facing to the back of house of the Greek space um, and, and ultimately completely enclose and protect those murals. However, that plan also includes a massive mural transfer on the outside of that wall so that the overall experience within that colonnade is totally preserved and we are still able to see those Allen Fool murals at the end of the colonnade without um, leaving them vulnerable to, to the damage that they've seen. I know it's uh, been quite a challenge for parks over the years to, to try to keep those intact and you can see the, the wear and tear that, that they've had to face. Great, thanks, Megan. Um, next question, um, Scott talked a lot about uh, restrooms in the park more generally, but I was wondering if maybe Meredith could touch on um, how we're looking at temporary restroom locations on Bannock and some of the other areas within the park for the new design as well. Yeah, so the um, there are um, temporary restroom locations being looked at um, around the park, but you know within we're, we're not uh, designing for any or planning for any permanent restroom locations within Bannock right now. Um, I think Jenna, if you want to speak to the DPR piece of that. Um, but the temporary restroom locations are being looked at, but not permanent on Bannock right now. But the, the design team has also identified a number of locations that we can provide additional services like restrooms on a temporary basis, in addition to um, all of the details that Scott's talked about for more of the long-term planning related to the restrooms. Um, just real quick too, we, I have been talking to Dottie about other possible locations in close proximity to either in on the edge of Civic Center Park or in a close proximity. We know as a city that we know as a city that restrooms are needed and we're trying really hard to add restrooms um, in the core of the city. You know, there was a restroom, a permanent restroom that was opened on the 16th Street Mall. Um, in the next month or so, we will be opening a restroom in Sunny Lawson Park. We are trying our best to um, provide this service because we know it's needed. So it's not something that's going unnoticed and we are trying to address the need. I do want to also speak to the trees. Um, I know there was quite a few um, comments about the trees. Um, we will, we are going to try to do trees where they're appropriate. 
understand that there is design guidelines for Civic Center Park. And so we cannot just go randomly plant a lot of trees in the park. There is specific spaces where we can plant trees and they have to be a certain species. We cannot just go outside and, and plant with their, whatever we want. There is very clear guidelines on what we can do and can't do. So um, we will try to plant trees as the park is closed right now. We actually will be planting about approximately 20 to 25 trees that are, that are either missing or have been damaged. And so as the park is closed, we will be trying to add more trees to the park. I do want people to understand too, though, we do live in a semi-arid desert and we are dealing with climate change and we are dealing with some serious issues about how when we plant a tree, trees need an awful lot of water in our city. And I think people would think we can just plant a lot of trees and they're just gonna grow like it's back east or somewhere where it's humid. That is not what happens here in Denver, Colorado. When we plant trees, if we do not take care of them at a high level, they die. So I just wanna be clear that we're gonna plant trees where they're appropriate and where they're gonna survive. And we're gonna do the best we can to add some more trees to the appropriate locations in Civic Center Park because everybody loves trees and it makes you feel better. Um, I think that's the exciting thing for me about the canopy. I know we can, you know, it's a concept and there's going to be ways to look at the canopy and how it could be better, maybe designed a little differently and incorporated. But if you think about it, if you go to the Greek theater right now and you go in the middle of the summer, you cannot sit in the Greek theater and enjoy yourself because it's just too hot. Um, it is not comfortable and it's not workable. It's just, it's not sustainable the way it's going. So the way I look at this is we've been in the first hundred years and it's worked, but we're moving into the next hundred years. That's what this plan is about. And so we really need to think a little outside the box and how for the next hundred years, we're gonna make this space um, sustainable and, and a place that the public can enjoy um, in a safe and, and comfortable manner. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thanks, Scott. I'm actually I'm glad you brought up the trees. Um, my next question was going to be for Nicole, um, specific about the Central Promenade. There were some suggestions and questions about adding more trees to the Central Promenade, and I know that's one of the many areas where we're restricted in terms of uh, planting and view shed. So, if you could touch on that, I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, we have, um, and we didn't share it in this presentation, but the 2005 master plan and the 2009 design guidelines really set a lot of where, and the master plan from the very original of where the trees can go because Civic Center is, is um, designed on these axes and these view corridors. So keeping that great lawn space open is something that's really talked about. Um, but we do have those opportunities at Bannock, and we have the opportunity at the central gathering feature to, to tie the, um, the trees into those locations. So that's where, where we've been doing that as much as we can. Great. Thanks, Nicole. And I know we're just about out of time. I want to be respectful of everyone's time, but I'm going to squeeze one more question in. Um, we've had a lot of questions about the Greek theater and the canopy structure and how um, the shade structure responds to the existing architecture and how we're you know, impacting view sheds. And I'd love to give um, Megan and Nicole a chance to just respond to some of those questions more generally. Yeah, thank you. I, um, and Nicole jump in as well. Um, as, as we mentioned, and I know it's tough when we show these bird's eye views because you, you really get a good view of the space as a whole, but um, our priority has really been um, thinking about the, the view experience on the ground. Um, and so um, we're certainly, um, you know, blocking some of those bird's eye views of the, of the structure. But again, when, when you look at those images of what uh, an, that arch shade canopy um, does from the pedestrian standpoint, we really have prioritized keeping the, the view of both the, from the north side and the south side of the Greek theater fully intact. We looked at so many different options for that shade structure. Um, and, and really, um, this was the, the one that, um, that most effectively kept that holistic view intact while also protecting the structure itself and ensuring we're not adding additional drainage onto the roof and, um, and create and adding any anchors to the structure so that that is uh, kept in place. The, the final aesthetic of, 
of what that looks like um, will continue to get refined in subsequent design phases. Um, it really, you know, we are at a conceptual level here, um, but uh, that that was really the reasoning for for the form and and scale and and we certainly appreciate the the care that's been um, and and thought that's been given to this incredible piece of architecture and um, want to make sure that those views are preserved. So, and I, I I would just add to that too. I think that's a great answer, Megan. I think you know we've really we you know we want to continue the legacy of the Greek theater and that ability to have these events and also make it work for the everyday. So, you know, it, it, some of those easy answers of just having a trust system come up and be taken away don't work when you want it to be a space for every day and how we can really make this usable and accessible for performers and daily users is really what pushed us to the concept that we're at. I love the pushback. I don't think that it's a bad thing. I think, you know, that's the design process and that has to happen. And th this is where we're at in the process. It's early and we have a bold and risky idea out there and that's okay. I think, you know, there needs to be this conversation and continuing um, design iterations. And it's, an iter it's an iterative process. It's always my least favorite word to say, but, um, Denver is up for that challenge. And I think we're up for something new and something exciting. And, and whether it's what you're seeing today, it's probably not gonna look exactly like this, but I think the excitement of imagining having performances at Civic Center is, that's cool. You know, I think the, the shade structure may look different in the end, but I think, you know, we're, we're trying to listen to what people have said in terms of let's, Let's do something big here and we can refine it for sure. Oh, and I want to also just add something we missed in this presentation, but I've spoken to a little bit in earlier ones and to, to Park's credit and the Conservancy's credit. One of the foremost conversations we've had um, with regard to uh, programming the Greek is that, that these events are not just um, the, the big events that, you know, programmers who can afford to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to activate the Greek to permit to shut down the, the space for a couple of days, um, but also ensure that there's some permanent resources out there so smaller community organizations can come in and plug in and use this space as, as their venue, as a public venue and, and um, incorporate low cost and free events into, into the Greek mm -hmm. programming. So um, just, just um, another element that, that speaks to that um, permanent trust system. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Nicole. And thank you everyone um, for your participation in the Civic Center Next 100 uh, concept design process. I know I didn't get to all of the questions, um, but we will be following up with a Q&A document for any questions that we may have missed. Um, but we really appreciate your feedback and your thoughtful comments. Um, and your time for joining us tonight. And I'll now hand it over to Kelly Turner to uh, walk us through next steps in the project. Great, thank you, Jenna. Um, I think there might be a couple slides left to show. So just hold on one second. All right, there we go. So um, I'll echo Jenna and say thank you all for your participation tonight. Uh, we've shared the feedback received to date earlier in the presentation, and this meeting will be our final touch point with you in this capacity on this concept level design. So following the feedback we received from this workshop and survey, we will be wrapping up the concepts and we'll be sending them out via digital and email correspondence within the next couple of months. Um, for moving forward, the Greek theater and the Central Promenade are a priority for implementation and will start design services in 2022. Uh, the Bannock Street project and central gathering feature will follow as funding is available. So um, be looking forward to hearing more about this continuing effort for the Central Promenade and Greek Theater next year. And then on the to the final um, slide, the if you would like to reach out and contact us um, with any questions or recommendations, please reach out to the email parksandrecreation at denvergov.org. 
You can share your thoughts um, at the surveymonkey.com for the Civic Center 100 project and watch for updates at denvergov.org slash the outdoor downtown. Again, we will reach out um, and provide the final concepts and um, all the data that we've received to date um, later this fall. So thank you all and have a wonderful evening. Um, hope to hear back from you all and don't forget to take that survey. Thank you. Thanks everyone.